when you sent me, you know, your Google thing, it was like Dom B, you know, it, it looked like 50 shades of gray. I was like, is there other stuff that he makes down there that I don't know about? Because, I mean, that, that's a... Hey, this is Glendon Cameron with the second installment of Badass Products by Badass Hustlers. There's a certain theme here, and I'll just give you a little bit of juice towards it. I'm designing this show to feature people who are making stuff in the space of eBay and Amazon. So many people are like, what do I do? What do I do? If I don't have eBay and I don't have Amazon, you make shit, bitch. <laughs> that's what you do. You create, you build, you make stuff. And that's the whole reason I'm doing this show to show you, you can do it. And here in the second installment, we have someone who started doing this when he was 14. He's now 18. He has a really rugged name, Dom B. Dom B in short for Dominic, but a very inspiring story of a hardworking hustler down under. He's not here, but he sells most of his products in the US. Now, how cool is that? Just go ahead, take a listen, and if at the end of installment two, you're feeling some kind of way about yourself, you should be, because I felt the same way. What if we all had parents like Don B, who fully supported our efforts because he's putting in the time, he's putting in the effort, and he's making a go at building his own economic empowerment. It's out there, folks. It's out there. Hopefully, you'll enjoy the installment like I did, and installment three is going to be way cool also. Uh, how long? Because I'll tell you how I found you, and actually, I found you on YouTube a few years ago because you had the curved blades, and I don't know if you had an Etsy store or not. I never had an Etsy store. You never had, you, so you just sold strictly online. But yeah, I found the yep. channel. I don't know what I was looking for. And then I don't know when I found you on Instagram because you make these wickedly curved blades. How did you get into that? Well, when I was little, I always really enjoyed knives. And I was a knife collector. I think I got my first knife when I was like eight or so. Okay. And I kept on getting his knives. My parents were just at that age were like, you know, were worried. Of course, what's this kid doing with all these knives? So me being me, I thought, how can I get more knives? And my parents knowing, oh, I'll start making them. All right. So, so you started been, making knives and knives, and then you about been a year ago knives since you were a kid. I've been making knives since I was about fourteen years old. How old are you now? I'm eighteen. You're eighteen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so look, this is even better. You're 18, mm -hmm. and you've been making knives for, what, let's just say five years, and this is all that you do. This is all that I do. So, I make all my money with this guy back here. And you, well, have you ever had a traditional job, or you've always just went? I, I did work experience. I don't know if that counts, but I've just always done this. That is really cool. So 14, 18, you've been making money making knives. That is really cool. Well, really I only started selling them about a year ago. Okay. About only a couple of months ago, I actually started selling them to make a profit. Up until then, it was all just, I wasn't making money with it. I was just selling it for the cost of materials. Wow. But about four months ago, I ramped up production, ramped up prices, and now this is what I do. Okay, so when you were just doing it to recoup your costs and making the blades, mm -hmm. what what kind of work did you do? Are you just part time work? You were in school because you know I was um, in school. I was coming home from, from work at the or school from the end of the day. First thing, do a bit of homework and then just straight it onto the machines. That's pretty cool. All right, so now that you've been at this for a year, what's your biggest challenge in making the blades? Uh, time, getting, getting blades done in a timely fashion. Okay. So you make physical products and that's, that's one of the things that I think is really cool. How many knives do you, you know, just to give people who aren't making anything, how many knives do you make per week? Cause I don't know the knife making process. 
Do you make one knife per week? Do you make 10 knives per week? How does that work? I generally average about two to three knives a week. Okay. So you work on a custom order basis or did you just, you make a knife, you put it out there? And I do a bit of both. Okay. I mean, I've got custom orders back here and this is ordered by a very good friend of mine. And we started, and this one's going out to the States soon. And I've also got more production stuff like these guys, like these guys, where I made drawn these up, I designed these, and I made something I thought people would like. Wow. Okay, that's really cool. So right now, you said you said it was coming to the states. How expensive is it to ship a knife from Australia to the United States? Oh, uh, very. <laughs> <laughs> it's not cheap, and it's 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 not a pleasant experience. I know when I used to be on eBay, this is what I had to do to ship stuff all over the world. Because you couldn't do it, well, you could do it FedEx or UPS, but it was outrageously expensive. Often it was more expensive than the item itself. So I would have to oh, yeah. go to the post office, fill out these custom forms by hand, sign the declaration and all other stuff. It literally took me an hour and a half to two hours to send these things out back in the day. I'm quite sure you can do it faster now, but I would only send really high end stuff because it just was so much hassle that it didn't work for like a $30 item or $40 item. I do remember sending this really nice Frank Mueller watch to this guy in Germany. And I was a little scared because of the price of the watch, but everything worked out. But it was $85 to send that watch. Oh yeah, I can see that easy. It was 85 because he got it in seven days. I did not, because he spent 4,800 bucks for it. And I didn't want that to be on some ship for six. Uh, no, it was just like, no, I wanted him to get it as fast as possible. And I wanted to get signature confirmation. And he got it, I think in like five days and he was real happy. But, you know, since you're down there, I hear that people in Australia like, the masters of exporting and importing because everything has to be imported and exported down there. Uh, I, I'm paying a crap ton of money in, ex in importing material and all that because all my steel, all my abrasives, like this belt here comes from America, everything comes from the States. So I'm paying a fortune to get it into the country. So what wow, I can imagine. So you're now, you're, you're profitable, right? Or you're just elking out of profit since you know you've only been ramping this up for like a year. I, I'm sort of profitable in the fact that I've paid off all my machinery. Okay, that's so a good. I'm, that's it's all paid off. I've got all my material sorted. So I don't know if that counts, but as for the, as for the money side of it, because this is the first year, I'm really not making much of it. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Well. You're on that path, you know, typically there's a three to five year period for a business to start really making profit. Now, one of the things that you did was you paid for the cost of your your plant, so to speak. Mm -hmm. And that, that's pretty cool. Now, what are your plans for, say, the next five years or you just haven't thought that far ahead? Well, I want to ramp this up. I, I, I'm not satisfied in this little garage here because this is all that this really is. I want to ramp this up, have my own shop, probably hire people, although I'm not overly keen on that, <laughs> dealing with that poor crap. Right. Uh, more machines, get some, hopefully some automated machines such as CNC, you know, to do some of the really repetitive stuff mm -hmm. that people are good at, like drilling holes, making sure everything having consistent blanks, but okay. it's still having hand work in there. So it's not all just made by machines. Now, what made you just said, screw getting the job. <laughs> I'm just going to do this knife thing and nothing else. Because it seems like you've just really dedicated yourself to your business. Well, we had this in back in high school, we had this career council thing when people we have these these ladies who were just batshit insane. I don't know what was wrong with them. They were just horrible, horrible people. And they would just complain constantly and tell us how difficult everything was to get a job. And I wasn't exactly a fan of having to, you know, go to interviews and deal with all that bullshit. So I thought, screw this. I want to build something. I'm not going to deal with this crap. I'm going to do it by myself. 
Okay. I mean, fair enough. That makes any sense. No, it makes a lot of sense because, all right, let's take the fact that you're 18. This is the time for you to do this. You're not married. You don't have any kids. And if it takes another three years for it to get to another certain point, you'll be 21. I mean, this is the time because this is what I think. When they're telling us go to college, I think everyone should take two to three years to try to start a business, whether it fails or not. At least you've tried, you've learned some things, and then you can go to college if you want to. But this is your, how can I say it? This is when a mistake or a failure doesn't impact you as bad if, say, someone who was 50 who wanted to start making knives. They could still do it, but depending upon decisions and stuff that they made, it could be really bad or it could be really good. Whereas you, you've got, you're going on five years of experience and you've paid off your equipment and you're looking to ramp up. Now, it's definitely a winning combination because if you look at, you know, take pro athletes, everyone gets all starry eyed about these people. But if you look at a soccer player, you look at a tennis player, even if they're 18 or 20, sometimes these people have. 10, 12, 14 years of experience and dedicated practice. How can you not be good with that much practice in time dedicated to your craft? Because there was someone else that had, I don't know, because you do, I guess, the survival type knives. Because there's someone well, that has a lot of like more everyday carry knives. Because there's a lot of people that like to take something like this. Or this and just chuck it in their pocket. There's a whole sub community of people who like carrying small little fixed blade knives. Hold on, look again. That looks almost like a. Okay. And that's completely made by hand. I mean, that's brand by hand, sculpted by hand. Okay, so the first one you held up was a blank, and then the second one you held up was the final product? This is a blank. And that's basically me just taking a piece of steel. Grinding it out, drilling holes in it, and then sending it, sending out the heat treat because this is a special steel. Usually heat treat it myself, but I can't do D2, so I have to send that out. But all I have really is this bar of steel that I cut out and sell. So you you just can truly customize in this stuff. How much do you sell these knives for? Per you know, I know the prices probably vary. Uh, depends. Yeah. So my general number is about 170 us dollars okay that's shipped but i also have like the high-end stuff like the really extravagant stuff which is easy 300 us wow that's really cool so how many hours do you devote to being the knife man you know you say you like two to three a week how many hours is that to building knives yes uh i spend just about it all the time working on knives and building knives. I mean, I'm already answering emails, especially late at night, that some people like to email me one, two in the morning. <laughs> Get these emails. Hey, I want a knife. Uh, 90% of my orders happen in the middle of the night. I don't know why, but yeah, yeah, I, I totally feel that. Yeah. So I think it's because they're all American. They all want, they all want stuff. And at their time, it's like three o'clock for me in the middle of their night. <laughs> Yeah, because I know when we're trying to set this up, because I, I, you know, I, it's real easy to get the time frames messed up because it's uh, Tuesday here, but it's Wednesday where you are. And no, it's Tuesday here as well. It's still Tuesday. Well, okay, it's, it's Monday Tuesday. here. It's Monday here, and it's Tuesday there. Okay, see, it's it. It was just all crazy. So yeah, we're ahead of you. Yeah, most of your uh, customers are American, or oh yeah. Is I've it? sold bugger all to Australians. Most of them go straight to the States. Why do you think that is? That's kind of interesting. I think that's a lot to do with the gun culture because the people who like firearms and carrying pistols and all that, they also, all often, they like knives. They kind of go hand in hand. And with a huge gun culture in America, I think this really drives people <coughs> wanting knives like this because all these knives, all the knife companies are American. All the other knife makers are American. Hmm. There's only a handful of Australian knife makers here. Wow. Now, I don't remember the law. It's like you can have guns in Australia. You can't. I can't remember. I think that's one of the places that well, it's, really it's 
difficult. It's difficult. Uh, I honestly haven't looked too much into it, but you have to have a license. You have, can't have certain firearms. That sort of thing. Okay, so just out of curiosity, uh, how's crime in Australia? Like I said, you know, because I like to talk to people who live in these countries. We as Americans like to say, oh, this is what's going on. This is what's going on. I've got clients in Israel, the UK, virtually everywhere. And when I talk to people, I like to get their feel for what's going on in their country because you're there. You know what's going on versus all this hearsay stuff. How's we have the crime. We certainly have crime. <laughs> you said that. How, how bad is it like? Give me I, I, can't, I don't know. I can't compare it to America. But about a year ago, I'm 90% certain somebody tried to break into this house at like 11 o'clock at night. And I know because I heard it and I heard the dog go fucking insane. Okay. And I'm in the suburbs, so I'm not in the, the city or anywhere particularly dangerous, but I'm 90% certain that was someone break, trying to break in. So I heard them running on the on the balcony outside. Okay. That's uh that's pretty real. What's the economy like in the, in Australia right now? Well, lucky for me, the Australian dollar is crap all. So <laughs> I make a bit more money when I sell my knives to Americans. All right, I can, I no, 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 no. Because if your dollars, by US dollars. Yeah, if if uh, your dollars depressed, then our dollars go exactly. further down there. So yeah, I could see that. Even with the the crazy shipping, but okay, I'm still kind of stuck on the fact that you're like 18 and. Then you you when did you set up your YouTube channel? Was that like when you were sixteen? Because I, I was seventeen. Okay. When I was seventeen years old, I said, you know, what, let's let's do this. Let's start this. And in a year, mm -hmm. I went from never sold a single knife, and I went first to YouTube. Didn't really like YouTube too much. Well, I like YouTube, but it's it's difficult to interact with your audience in real time. Okay. I like YouTube because when I can put up a video, it's there forever. I don't have to continually monitor it. But then I went to Instagram, which allows me to continually interact. But then I have to continually post as well. Otherwise, my feed goes dead. I have no inquiries. YouTube just continually works in the background. So where do you get most of your traffic? Instagram or YouTube? Instagram and Tumblr. OK, I found a Tumblr page. I don't know if it was yours, because it was like, um, I think the guy that was being in Manchester. I don't think that was yours. Maybe he, I think he had a knife. He had a knife of yours on his Tumblr page. But that's really interesting because I was looking at where would you market, and it's really interesting. So YouTube doesn't really get you that much traffic, but Instagram and Tumblr. It's that's where it's at. I mean, I don't know what it is about Instagram and Tumblr, but people really like knives there. I mean, I've got shit old traction on Facebook, for instance, but. Instagram just exploded. I was not even expecting it to happen. It just went bang. Well, you've got some pretty wicked looking products, so I could see the visual. And when, like I said, I would just, I just found a channel. I don't know what the heck I was looking for. And then, you know, I followed you on Instagram. And it's really interesting because, you know, when you talk about how to get traffic, how to get leads, I never really thought of Tumblr for a physical product. Now, I did use Tumblr for some books. It was really interesting. Like, uh, I was writing some adult books, so to say, and I put short drafts of that stuff on Tumblr under a really crazy picture, and that got me a lot of traffic. But I never really thought of Tumblr for physical products. So one of the things I like about doing these things is I also I learn so much every time I do one. And, you know, you are the you're you're the second guinea pig. There's like 18 guinea <laughs> pigs lined up, but you're the second one. And that's really cool. So, I, what's your Tumblr page? Because it is DB Blades posts. Hold on, I'm gonna, see, post right. I'm gonna see what kind of crazy stuff you have on there. It's usually the same yeah. stuff on Instagram. DB Blades post Tumblr. So. Up until roughly a year ago, 
you were just doing it for the love of making blades more so feeding your own passion your own uh oh this is pretty cool this is really cool like i said you know you're giving me an ideal for some other stuff because now i'm looking at your tumblr page and you have this knife with the orange handle is that a flower in your backyard? Because <laughs> it looks like it probably is. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty cool. That is real cool. I'm looking at all this other stuff because um so hmm. Instagram and Tumblr. Have you tried Pinterest or that hasn't worked out for you? I uh, on Pinterest I have like sixty followers. I I'm not a huge fan of it. Probably okay. I don't know too much about it yet, but I I don't know. I haven't got too much traction there. Might need a bit more work. Yeah, I am looking at what you're doing because this is really cool. Like I'm looking at this uh, the knife with the green looks like a a cord wrapped around the handle. That's pretty, oh yeah yeah. And then the one on the oh that's pretty neat. This is definitely <laughs> I'm looking at the slim pry bra with the oh, bow. Yeah, that's, that's popular. I see. This is really, really cool. Thank you. Now, I guess uh what's your biggest challenge right now? Is it time or materials or a combination of everything? Combination of everything. Getting getting people interested is probably the biggest one. I mean, that's probably the challenge with just about every business getting right. getting customers. But then I also have the issue where it comes to responding to people in a timely fashion and also getting shit done. <laughs> okay, like from start to finish, how long does it take you to make one knife? You know, if you just ballpark the hours from taking that big block of steel and turning it into a finished product. For a well, for a straight up custom, it takes me about ten hours. I'm just making one, but I'm doing like six. I can do them all at the same time. It saves me the time. I might be able to pump it out in about four hours if all goes well. <laughs> if one of the handles cracks and craps the bed, then then just that's when you start complaining. All right. So when you said you do heat treatment, now I've watched on television where they've got this thing, whether it's red hot. They've got the tongs and they slide the, the blade into the fire. You've got one of those micro furnaces or wh whatever they're called. Well, I've got a converted electric kiln for pottery and I have a tub of oil and I stick it in the fire and I stick it in the oil and generally we have the fire and then we stick it in the oven. That's about it. You really like this stuff, I can tell. Yeah, I do. <laughs> man, 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 man. Uh, you, just, just an ideal. Um, do you show how you make the knives on YouTube, or you just put up finish? I used to. Used to. How did those? Yeah, videos? every now and then I do. Because uh, I think... it's just a pain to film and all that. Because I don't really want to have a camera right behind this thing, because this thing throws out sparks everywhere. Right. Okay. 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 Man, I'm like 18. So, how hard is you know? Oh, this is a whole different direction. How hard is it for someone who's going into emerging adulthood to move out and live on their own in Australia? Well, it's expensive to get a house here. I looked at that pretty early on. It's very, very, very expensive to get housing and an accommodation of that. So, I'm still living with my parents. I'm trying to get them to take money from me, but they're, they're not really not really too keen on that. But every now and then I'll, I pay something they don't know about it. So, so well, I, that think, I think they're not taking money from you because they're seeing how hard you're working. Yeah. It's not like you're just some wayward kid who are, I mean, you've built an enterprise. I mean, I, I really want you to think about what you did because, you know, no, the money's not what you want it to be right now, but you can't get to the really good money without going through this this period of growth. I mean, you've created a business out of nothing at the age of you start this at 16, 14, I think. Yeah. Start dicking around with it at 14. And then when did when did you say you got really serious? 
about a year ago when I started. Well, about a year ago I started making it, but I wasn't making profit from it. It was more of just to get the get the ball rolling. And about okay. five months ago, I became a registered business. Yeah, late no, yeah, about mid November of 2014, I became a registered business and started making money with it. Okay, so really, in less than a year, you went from, as you put it, dicking around to turning it into a growing concern that, I mean, I'm just looking at your work. I can see you making money to get a house even there in Australia. Cause I do remember it's expensive there. I don't know how expensive, because like I said, everything is imported. Everything's imported. I mean, what do you, I think you got water and fish and a few things, but other than that, everything has to yeah. be. And we got plenty of shape. Don't worry about shape. Don't have to shape. <laughs> we got all kinds of shape. <laughs> Now, I got a question for you. Um, have you ever thought about leaving Australia or are you just planned on staying there forever? Oh, yeah, yeah I've, I've, I fully intend on leaving the country. It is very difficult to do what I do here. For instance, the knife is very limiting. So there is a lot of things that I can't build. So I have a um, I have dual citizenship with Switzerland. So I'm oh. seriously considering I might just move to Switzerland and do it there. It's been ideal. I think ideally it'd be America, because that's where the whole the whole community is, all the materials are. But it's either going to be somewhere in America or somewhere in Europe. One of those two. You have dual citizenship. That's got to be really sweet, because from what I understand, you just can't get Switzerland citizenship. That is really no, no. one of the hardest ones to get. Uh, even if you marry somebody, they still are looking at you kind of crazy. So. That's pretty interesting. Really interesting. So when do you think? Maybe what? Two years? Three years? Because hoping to be out by twenty one. That's the goal. Twenty one. I think that's really cool because the thing is, you wouldn't be. And this is something that a lot of people miss. You're moving. You don't have to worry about a job. You mm -hmm. you have your registered company, and you tell because a lot of these countries. If you're talking about moving there, first question is like, how are you going to make money? Do you have a job? And mm -hmm. I had a friend who just recently went through this and he moved to Hong Kong. And since he was going there with a business, all kind of doors just opened up for him. He said it was just like, I felt like royalty. It's like everywhere I went, they were doing this, they were doing that. And because he opened up another office of his company, he still got the one here and he moved over there to run that one. And they literally opened up the world for him. So you move over there. You don't have to have that income issue. You know what I mean? No, oh, yeah. They don't hold parasites. No, and uh, it's a pretty nice place. I got another friend who who's living there right now. He left the United oh, States. It's a great place. Maybe four years ago, and he went to the Philippines to do some stuff. Then he ended up in Geneva, and that's where he's been the last two years. And I don't think he's coming back. <laughs> but he makes a lot of money, a crazy amount of money for what he, well, he works hard, but he makes a lot of money. But that's pretty cool because you bring up a subject that a lot of people really don't understand because since you have created your own income, it's portable. You know, it's not as portable as mine, but it's portable because you know what you need and you can have all that stuff set up before you even get there. And you can, with a website and, you know, using Instagram and Tumblr, you don't really have to worry about, like, if you had a physical shop, this would, it could be a nightmare. I've had a physical shop and I'm telling you, moving a store and doing all this crazy stuff is a, is a shudder when I think about it. But 21, you plan on being possibly Switzerland or the States. And something else that you're doing, I don't think you understand. You're building something that you could possibly pass on to your grandkids. Oh, that's that's a that's a big part of it because I'm an ambitious motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I really I, that's a big part of it because I want to build something. I don't really like just sitting on my ass all day with my thumb up, thumb up my ass. I, I'm a huge part of the motivation is because I really want to build something of value. I mean, and that's why I work. And here are six, seven days a week, ridiculously late hours answering bloody emails. 
Well, I mean, you know, you've got that issue if it's just you. So you're making the product, you're shipping the product in your customer service. But at some point, you will have to get someone because I can tell you right now, if you got someone just to answer emails, that would free you up tremendously. I would not say giving anyone money control issues, but uh, yeah, if you got someone to answer emails, you'd be shocked at how much that would free you up. Because I answer... I still answer some, but Amy handles most of them. So it's freed me up tremendously. But the the cool thing, and one of the reasons that I did this is physical products aren't going to disappear, even with the internet, uh, because the guy, his name was uh, Rick Cadets. He was on before you. He's making this 50 cal razor. And yeah, and, then got, yeah and then I got a guy who he sells yachts. And then there's some other people that I'm, like I said, I've got people we're talking back and forth and I want to let people know because, you know, your story is very inspiring. You started the company. I mean, oh, seriously. I mean, you know, really think about this. A few years ago, there was nothing. You just like, hey, you woke up one day and said, hey, I'm going to make knives. And then I'm quite sure there was some challenges. I'm quite sure because your age, people were looking at you sideways. So not only were you dealing with the normal pressures of starting a business, but you were looking at people like, well, he's just a kid. What the hell does he know? I know you've got some of that too. No? Yes? Or Yeah, 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 yeah certainly. <laughs> yeah, never, never short on advice, as the last guy said. Well, part of it is the orientation of how what we should do you should go to school you should go to college and all this other stuff and then you know you have went ahead and just said um i like how you talked about the ladies in school the guidance counselors and how horrible they said things were going to be they didn't, at least they told you the truth you got to be grateful for that yeah <laughs> i mean seriously um I, like i said i don't know what's going on in australia but i do know what's going on in the rest of the world in terms of these things called jobs are disappearing because technology, you know, as you build your business, you're going to be able to automate some things, make things easier as you grow and build income. Just not going to need as many people. And when you build your own thing, you learn some very valuable skills. Like one, let's go back to, you know, Facebook. You, I have the same issue that you have on Facebook. I really get not much of anything from Facebook. I get it from YouTube. I get it from Twitter. Instagram, I'm actually starting to get some of that. And, you know, Tumblr for another project I got love. So knowing where to put yourself and your product is pretty cool because, you know, you're 18. I want you to think about when you're 28 and you stay on this path, you know. Hopefully, Rich. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I mean, you got to think about it. This is a very real possibility because you're making something that is different and unique. I mean, you know, we, we live in a world where people pay $450,000 for a car, you know, a Rolls Royce Phantom. You don't need to pay that, but they do. So there's always people who want really, really nice stuff. So you're making really, really nice stuff. But no, I mean, 10 years. I mean, OK, l l let's just be real. It's very possible. It's not kind of, sort of, well, maybe, because you already know what you're doing with just you. And you keep your costs contained. If you had a crew of three, I'm quite sure you could live pretty comfortably in Australia. You know, if you had people doing the more arduous work. So, yeah, I, I see that, especially in Switzerland. I got a question. Can I come like hang out in Switzerland when you move there and you get the palace and you're in you're with the Swiss chicks who I don't know. At one point, the Swiss really didn't date anyone that wasn't Swiss for a long time. I don't know if that's true now, but when I was over there, it was pretty much the vibe that I got. But the world's different. So no idea. No idea. No idea how it's like over there or anymore. How did you get a dual citizenship? Mom, dad or? Parents both came from Switzerland. I've got the whole family over there. Oh, whole even, clan. even better. So you got a place to stay and 
food. Yeah, I mean, come on, it doesn't get I think any better. Probably what's going to happen is I'm going to rent a factory or rent a shed somewhere and just sleep in the shed and work in the shed until I can afford a house. <laughs> this is really cool. This is really cool. Now, what has been the, you know, if you had to hammer it down, what's been the biggest, the one single challenge that you had getting this whole thing started? Probably getting people interested. You know, there's a, the custom knife industry is getting bigger and bigger, and there's more and more new knife makers coming out. So a challenge is to kind of, you know, get my name out there, get people to know who DB Blades is. And that's okay. why I do so much on Twitter and all on Tumblr and Instagram and all that crap. No, I totally get that. I totally get that. So, because when you sent me, you know, your Google thing, it was like Dom B. You know, it, it looked like Fifty Shades of Grey. I was like, is there other stuff that he makes down there that I don't know about? Because <laughs> I mean, that, that's a pretty wicked name. Because you could actually put that on a T-shirt and it would work. No, I don't really. You know, I'm part of the gun culture. You know, when you talk about the gun culture, I'm part of that crew. And I've never really thought of a knife until I got a recently, I got a gun. And I started looking at knives. So it, it's, it just seems very util. You know, I used to be in the Army. And if you had a knife, if you had a gun, it just made sense to have a knife because you had to use for it. There was always something you needed to do. You had to cut something, you had to move something. So there was a lot of uses. So I can see that. Really, really cool. But getting people to notice you and how do your friends treat you since I would take it that many of them are either in college or working their first jobs? How's the relationship between you and your normal peers when you're very atypical? Well, I've, I've stopped communicating with a lot of my friends. I've got a much tighter knit people, crew of people that I maintain contact with, you know, maintain, maintain sanity. But I don't know, maybe three weeks ago, I went to a party for the first time in, eight, in months. And I felt really out of place because I felt older than everybody else, if that makes sense. I felt like I was this babysitter. I mean, everyone else was, was couldn't walk because they were so drunk, and me was just standing here. Me and this other very good friend of mine were sitting in the corner, just talking. Well, you were getting smashed because you knew the next day you had to perform and make stuff, so you couldn't just like blow your, you know, just lose it. I totally get. It. No, what you're going through is what every person who does something different from the crowd goes through. You're looking at the world. Like you said, you know, by 28, you want to be rich. That's a real goal for you. That's, I mean, you know, you've got 10 years to do it. You've got the product to do it. And if you just keep busting your ass and grinding, you'll get there. They're not looking at that. And I'm not even going to put a, a label of right or wrong. They're just, they're just not interested in that stuff. So by the time you're 28 and, oh, yeah, just something else that you should do. Um Start your estate plan. I know it's going to sound really crazy. Start your estate planning now. So, you know, if you have any ideas of getting married or whatever, you go ahead and put your company, once you get it to a certain size, in a trust. Come on. Come on, Google. Oh, oh my God. Yes. Oh, my got God. It. Finally. He's here. They're all good. <laughs> all right. That was just like, I didn't know what to do. I've never had this problem before. I think it was because oh, I was using that other page. Google. The Googles don't like me. They don't like you? What'd you do? No, they don't like me. I don't know. I think I just existed too much. <laughs> all right. Man, cool. All right. Let's see. What time is it there? Oh, it is. Oh, it's one o'clock. We're all good. Okay. So, you know, what's your real name? <laughs> I didn't know that. I'm Dominic. Dominic? Yeah, Dom is short for Dominic. All right, cool. I'm in Australia, so we, we say everything short. Cool. So, all right. Let's see. I have a list of questions. Let's just jump into it. <laughs> 